homework um, in our Alex, and so we're looking at assignments from 4.2 and 4.3 that's graphing our exponential and logarithmic functions. So this wants us to graph uh, this function 3 to the x. So if we're going to graph it, I need to plot a few points. If you look at the tools that they give us, there's two different tools. There's the exponential function. You can see that's just kind of curving up. looks like a j, and it says exp if I hover over it. And the other one is the logarithm, which is the inverse. So you can kind of see how it's like reflected over that line y equals x. So you should be really familiar with those. Those are some new basic functions. So if I want to graph 3 to the x, I'm going to use this tool. And so it wants me to place the horizontal asymptote. Well, there's no, um, the horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals 0 because it doesn't move up or down any. So I'm just going to keep that at y equals 0. So on the x-axis, I click there. And this says place my first point. So I want to plug in a point or think about what happens when I plug in an x value here. So like for x equal to 0, 3 to the 0 power is 1. So when I plug in a 0, I get 1. Now that's on every exponential function. Now if you look at this, it counts by 5s in the vertical direction, and that's because exponential functions grow so quickly. And so it's really hard. It's not letting me click on 0, 1. So I'm going to have to plot a point. So I go over here to my tools, and it says plot a point. And I'm going to put in 0, right, when x was 0. 3 to the 0 would be 1. So I plotted that point. So if I go back to my exponential function, it makes me replace that horizontal asymptote. So I want to make sure that I do that. And that's right there on the x-axis. you got to kind of move your mouse around a bit. And then plot the first point. So I'm going to plot at that 0, 1. And then it wants a second point. So now for this one, um, instead of plugging in 0, if I plug in 1, that's going to be 3 to the 1, which will be 3. So when I plug in a 1, I get 3. Again, I can't sketch that here. So I'm going to have to plot that point as well. So when I put a 1 in, I get 3. So it looks like in order to plot these exponential functions here in Alex, you're going to have to um, plot two points first. So let's plot that. And then I'm going to click on that tool again to graph. And let's see if that's enough points. So I place the horizontal asymptote. Oops. No, there we go. Okay. I had to kind of push down on that one. Place the first point. Place the second point. And so there's my graph. And then it wants to know the domain and the range, so you can kind of figure that part out. Um, let's see if I can get another one in here for you. So 1, 6 to the x. So again, it's going to do the same thing. I would use that plotting a point tool first, plot two points, and then use the exponential function. Again, I know this one is an exponential function because it has x in the exponent. All right, so this one just wants me to graph by using transformation. So let's see how this one goes. It's the same 3 to the x function that we had previously, um, but this time it's plus 4 out here. So that's going to be actually shifting our graph up 4 units. So when we look at part 1, it says the graph of g is the graph of the parent function, y equals 3 to the x, shifted 4 units, and I already said that, it's going to be moving upward, and that's because it's outside of our function. All right, so this parent function, uh, y to the 3x, is an increasing function because it's going upward like a j. Um, you can plot a few points on the graph and use those and the horizontal asymptote to form the outline of the transformed graph. So for example, if we take the point negative 2, 1 9th, right, if you take negative 2, plug it in here, 3 to the negative 2 would be 1 9th. Um, that's on the 3 to the x graph that's going to correspond to this on the 3x plus 4, and that's because they added 4. So if you add 4 to that 1 9th, that's 4 and 1 9th. But 4 and 1 9th is really, as an improper fraction, 37 ninths. Either, either of those ones would be perfect. Similarly, if you plug a negative 1 in, 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. So that's on the parent function. So if you shift it up 4, again, that y value, 1 third, is going to add 4. So it'll be 4 and 1 third which is the same as 13 thirds. So in that same way, if we have 0, 1 on this guy, it's going to correspond to, well, if we're going to move up four spaces, that's going to be at 0, 5. Because again, we're already at 1, and so we're shifting it up 4. Now the point 1, 3 on this graph, that would correspond to 1, 7. Because again, you're adding 4 to the outputs. 
This will be 2, 9 would be now 2 and 13. All right, and so then it wants us to sketch this. And we already have our points from up above. And so I'm going to just plot those because remember it needed two points to plot. So I'm going to be at 0, not 0, 1 anymore, but 0, 5. Let's plot that point. And then let's plot if I put a 1 in. That was going to be at 1, 3 previously. Now it's at 1, 7. There we go. So here's my exponential function. Its horizontal asymptote is at 4 because it shifted up 4. And then I'm just going to kind of hover over those two points I just plotted. And let's check it. There we go, we got it. And again, what's our domain and our range? And let's see if we have a logarithm one in here. There's another transformation. This one's going to be moving um, left and right as well as up or down. So a lot of exponential functions going on in here. Trying to find one that had a log in it. There we go. So this is log base 4 of x. So really what I like to do with these log base 4 of x ones is think about their inverse. So the inverse of log base 4 is 4 to the x. So 4 to the x power, um, 4 to the x would have the point 0, 1 on it. So we're going to flip flop that and we will have 1, 0 now. So I'll plot that point. And then again, 4 to the x, so kind of ignoring log because I'm going to switch x and y. This is the inverse. So normally for the graph 4 to the x, I plug in a 0, I get 1. I plug in a 1, I get 4. So that means if I plug in a 4, I'm going to get a 1. So I just plotted that. I'm going to see if 2 points is all it needs again. Let's see. It does want me to put in a vertical asymptote. Our vertical asymptote uh, depends on if we move left or right. We're not moving left or right because there's nothing being added or subtracted to that x. So it's going to be right on the y-axis. That's x equals 0. And then I'm going to connect the dots. So using this, it wants me to plot four points and draw one asymptote before using that function. All right, so we need a couple more in here. So again, I said um, we plugged in... Um, zero and we would get a one if we're just thinking about like four to the x. So I'm kind of ignoring log and just thinking, okay, the exponential function would be four to the x. If I plug in a one, I would get four. So that's why I have that four one on there. Um, let's see, what happens if I plug in a negative one? Well, four to the negative one would be one fourth. So if I put one fourth, that would get me a negative one. And you're gonna see that form in that little arc here. And then um, let's do one more. What happens if instead of uh, plugging a 1 into 4 to the x, I plug in a 2? 4 to the 2 would be 16. So that would be 16, comma 2. So it's out of bounds. So that's because our graph only goes to 9. So it wants us to pick a smaller point. So instead of, um, let's see, negative 1 got us 1 fourth. Let's do negative 2, which would get us 1 16. So that would mean that 1, 1 over 16 would get us a negative 2. So again, we're thinking about this as if it's an exponential function, and then we're just flip-flopping our x and our y because log is the inverse. So if I plot that point, and so again, you can see it's getting really, really close to the x-axis. Let's try and do our graphing tool and automatically put it exactly where we need it. In. That's perfect. Check it, and we get our little green check mark. So, Hope that was helpful. If you have any more questions, just let me know.